It's Allie and welcome back to the Fab Little Dish channel, your cozy little nook for all things food, leisure, and decor, especially holiday decor since tis the season. And today we're going to be decorating my Santa's Bakery Kitchen. We're going to be doing that together. I'm going to be walking through the process and we're starting off with the tree that's behind me over here and we're going to do some countertops and it's just going to be a lot of fun. This was the cutest I've ever done in my kitchen and it was kind of a challenge because I always do some kind of gingerbread. I usually just do traditional gingerbread in my kitchen, but I wanted to weave in the pastel gingerbread theme somehow along with the traditional and I knew that was going to be a challenge but I think I did it in a really fun magical way. I have a little north pole corner that you'll see me do and that was how I was able to introduce a lot of the whites and the creamies and all of that so you're gonna I, I hope you have fun and make sure to leave me a comment and let me know if you do enjoy and hit the like button make sure to hit subscribe so you don't miss the full tour which is going to be the next video literally every nook and cranny is going to be shown in, in all of its holiday glory and i don't want you missing out so please make sure to hit subscribe but in the meantime come with me in my kitchen and help me decorate my santa's bakery kitchen i'm starting off with hanging up the wreath which is going to be behind the food Christmas tree and this is a it's a pretty large wreath that I bought from home goods and it's it was already flocked and it had some sweet treat food ornaments in there and some gingerbread so it really went well with the kitchen and I have this really big vintage mirror that I got at an estate sale years ago and that is always in the kitchen so I'm hanging it in front of that mirror and I am taking a long, very cute ribbon from at home. It was the Mrs. Claus's Bakery theme that they came out with this year. And I do like hanging wreaths with the ribbon attached to it, especially if you're hanging it on a window or anything like that. This is a little different because it's on a mirror. So I did hot glue gun the ribbon. So. Uh, I just took one long piece and looped it through and then I hot glue gunned it so that it, uh, it would stay in place right there in the corner. But yeah, it was pretty simple. Um, but this was a really cool wreath where it actually had a, a perfect hook that went right above the mirror. So I originally was going to hang this behind the mirror with the ribbon, but I actually ended up not having to do that and I didn't even realize it until I started fiddling with the wreath and putting it up there. And now we're prepping the tree. So taking it out of the box here. This tree is a few years old. It is probably on one of its last years. It was had a lot of gaps in it compared to the years in the past so I had to put a lot of snow in there to make sure that it looked full but regardless it still came out really cute I was a little frustrated when I pulled it out because there were two strings of lights that were out so I had to pause and go to the store and get some new string lights and tie them on there but it it worked out great and the store actually was out of multicolored white strand lights so I had to actually use icicle string lights these are multicolored icicle string lights so it was kind of an it was serendipitous I loved using these and I'm going to use them on little trees moving forward and I highly suggest you do the same because with the strands from the icicles you just wrap them around you can wrap them around the branches so much easier and so that's that's kind of what I'm doing and I'm the icicle lights, I'm telling you. That was kind of a little 
accident I stumbled upon that is going to be your new best kept secret. It's a, I, I think icicle string lights are the way to go for little trees. They just make it so simple. And I only used one strand for those two strands that were out. So a little goes a long way. I think it was a nine foot. It was a pretty big, um, it was a pretty, because they were out, I think for outdoor lights. So there's a little secret for you. But yeah, I'm just fluffing out the tree here. Again, I like to pull the branches to the left in opposite directions and then pull it forward. And really I started seeing that there was a lot of gaps in that, especially in the center. And it was really hard to fluff it to get it to where I needed it to be. This is a tree that was on the cheaper side. So I know I was talking about my living room tree. I was easily, I thought I was, I was scared at first, but I was easily able to fluff it out so it looked perfect but this one was a different story so again really if you want to keep a tree for years and make sure that it's fluffable <laughs> you you need to spend a, a little bit extra on it and you'll get at least a couple years extra use out of that tree trust me it's it's worth it so here now I'm continuing to fluff it but I put the lights on and look at how pretty they look again those it's it's those string icicle lights they're, they're wrapped around the branches and the, it just really it, it created such an even glow, I feel. There weren't any weird gaps with the lights. And this tree's cool, it came pre-lit with white lights. So I have a little foot clicker thing that you, I have it on all my trees, but on this one in particular, if you click it one, one of them, it'll be all white lights. And then if you click the other one, you could have all multicolored lights or you can have them both on at the same time. And that's usually what I do, but it's, it's, it's really cute uh, when you just have the multicolored lights on too, or at least have the option. So this was, this was not too bad to do, but just had to make sure to get those lights all situated in there. You can kind of see how I'm doing it with the string lights because these were the sections that I were missing. And I just really wrapped it around each little branch and made sure to pepper them throughout.
And this is the filler that I used for the tree with the snow. I really liked this stuff. It was from Hobby Lobby and it easily broke apart and I was able to, I believe I got two bags and I used all of it on the tree. So I even used some on the tree topper when I put it on so you'll see that. So it just kind of looks like a snow fell on top and I even put some extra along the branches and it looks so pretty underneath these lights. So I really didn't want any gaps and I put, I started off uh, just kind of making sure that center because there, were, there was a ton of just open space where the center of the tree actually was. So I put a lot of snow in there and that's where I really started to fill the gaps. Then I moved on to the branches, the larger ones at the base, and I put them, I, I really tried to mimic how snow falls on a tree where the, the larger branches on the bottom get more snow than the ones on the top. So I, I just tried to kind of do that throughout. And it really also provided a, a nice little cushion for some of the ornaments when I, when I put those on there but it really filled all of the gaps and it made the tree look brand new. So I highly recommend using any kind of snow like that to, to get your effect. Now for the fun part, the adding, or, or at least my favorite part, adding ornaments. This is kind of a little array of all we have to work with. I really stuck with anything that is bakery themed or Santa's bakery. And this is a food tree though, so it kind of has anything uh, on it that is food related. The tree in the bedroom, however, is Candyland pastel themed, so I pulled a lot of what I used to all kind of put on the same tree, uh, and and I did add some to the Candyland tree. Some of those cupcakes, for instance, some cookies, but more of the pinky colors. I saved the reds and all the other colors for the kitchen, since we, we bring a lot of those colors in here. But those cupcakes are from, I think they're Kurt Adler. They came in a big set. I have a lot of my ornaments from him for my food tree. He, I even have a Coca-Cola one from him, an Easy Bake Oven. It's, I mean, so there's a whole different array of, of ornaments that are throughout here. And they're from all different places. Some of them are vintage. That one, one's from Cracker Barrel, the little, the little cake on the plate. Um, and my grandma got me some really cool Christmas tree or 
they're cookie cutters with actual cookies dangling inside of them too. Not actual ones, but. And then I have a little Dunkin' guys. We love our Dunkin' Donuts. We're from the East Coast, so we gotta represent. <laughs> so yeah, there's just a whole different mix of, of, of things in here. And they're really fun. It's, it's so nostalgic to go through some of these because I've had them for years and years. garland next and this is just a simple one that I have from Kurt Adler he comes out with so many cute food related ornaments and things for your tree so if you're doing a food tree look for him um but yeah I just kind of put one uh, strand didn't even double wrap any of them just this one is just all you need on its own it's sparkly it's got little peppermints and little jewels and it really pairs nicely with the lights and the rest of the ornaments. And again, I don't like to overdo it with a big garland because I like the ornaments to stand out on their own.
now it's finally time to put the star on. And this was a gingerbread cookie star that I got at Macy's a couple of years ago. And it's really cute. It goes really well with this tree. It's not heavy or anything. And I did stick some snow in there to get it all nice and cushy to make sure that it sits in there well. And then when I put it in on top of the tree, I you know how there's the metal part of a tree topper that if you have a very full tree you won't be able to notice well this one's not very full so I used that snow to wrap around the wire part so you actually couldn't see it because it was red so it, it does stand out and I didn't want that and so it's really cute it looks like as if a cookie had just been baked was put right on top of the tree and then a nice pretty snow fell right on top afterwards so it, it turned out really nice and let me know in the comments if you all agree or if there's anything different that you all do to avoid having the wire from your tree topper sticking out. It's just hard with a with a white tree and snow was really the main thing I could think of to to hide it all. So let me know in the comments if you have any other suggestions or, or what you think. And just look how gorgeous everything turned out. I love that Happy Meal ornament, by the way. That's one of my favorites from when I was little. The colors on this tree are just so fun and so yummy. And they go with the Santa's bakery theme so well. Really brings in all the reds. And it also helps me bring in some of the pastel colors, too, from the gingerbread, which we'll see in a second when we do the countertops. But look how cute. I love it. And that wreath just looks so gorgeous. Now we're doing my countertops and I had already started them and pulled some stuff down. That's very typical of me where I will completely decorate something to get an idea of it, not like it or not like parts of it and redo it. So I did like some parts that I did create and I left that here as a base to work with just because it's kind of dangerous getting up on these countertops and I didn't want to take everything down and re-put it back up because I, I would like to remain authentic for sure. So I do like to have these, um, there's just these really cool Christmas book boxes. Uh, I, I use Halloween ones also for Halloween time, but I like to use those to just create dimension on shelves and, and have things lift up. I used cookbooks here, but I ended up actually pulling that down and did something different right before I filmed the final result. But um, yeah, cookbooks work, just kind of anything. I was playing around with a bunch of things and I got a lot of cute bake shop trees that I put in here. I did put my larger um, brown tone gingerbread houses uh, up on here, They'll, just because that's really where they could fit. And then Mr. Santa is in the middle. He is what inspired this theme. I was actually on a fall foliage trip in Maine this year and I found him at a home goods and was so excited because I've still never seen him anywhere near any at any of my home goods or anywhere I've been. So I, I put him in my suitcase and he was a prized possession coming back home with me. I got the milk and cookie sign from uh, Hobby Lobby, really cute. And I have a, a cute little hook thing that I don't remember where I got. Um, I've had that for years, but I like to put it on. And then I have that gingerbread garland too, which really pairs nicely with the rest of the kitchen. 
And then this corner is the North Pole corner. So this was really fun. I, this is how I brought the pastels in and it actually does look a little different, the final result, because I changed my mind with some stuff, but hey, at least you see my process and my, the madness that ensues as I'm figuring out what looks best. Uh, a lot of pieces I got from Home Goods. I do like those little white trees too because they just create good dimension. And really what inspired this corner, well, it's, it's Mr. Claus's bakery. So he, his home, the North Pole for sure, but that, that the blow mold from Walmart, he really inspired the North Pole corner over there by the fridge. I, I, and oh, not, I got a really cool little tree topper that I was gonna use for the Candyland tree, but I didn't. And I got that from Ross. It's just a really pretty iridescent. I put it behind this set, and when I put the lights on it, it really looks cool at night, so you'll see that. But that's kind of where I put that there. But it's really cute. This was a fun, this was, this is my favorite little corner. It ended up being my favorite little corner in the whole kitchen. So um, it, was, it was a good time. And this is my coffee bar. I love this little space too. I have from Hobby Lobby, the little mug rack that I know I've seen a few other people have and I put all my holiday mugs on there. I also have to put out my Hello Kitty espresso mug set that I got and that's gonna be coming out shortly here. Just all my favorite little mugs so that I can Whatever my mood happens to be, I can kind of just get whatever, whatever one. <laughs> and that is a fun little Santa candy shop thing. I can't remember where I got him from. That's, I got it, just things from my travels. Just, I like to put anything around here that just makes me happy and puts me in a good mood when I'm getting my coffee ready. enjoy the final result of all of our hard work. Thank you for decorating my kitchen with me. I know Santa's really excited to have his bakery all set up and ready for the holidays. <laughs> I'll go ahead and put some music on and let you enjoy the rest of the, the tour.
I hope you had so much fun decorating Santa's Bake Shop kitchen with me. I know I enjoyed every second of showing you the process and walking you through the final result. It's This has just been so fun doing all of the Decorate With Me series. I wish I could have done more, but some things just need to be saved for the grand 2023 holiday decor home tour. That is going to be the next video coming out. So make sure to hit the subscribe button if you already haven't so that you don't miss out when that drops. I'm so excited to show that one off to you because it's gonna have everything in my apartment. It's gonna have every room, every nook, every cranny during day, during night so you could see the transformation. I'm thrilled to be able to share this with you all and please make sure to hit the like button if you've been enjoying this video. Make sure to look at the other videos as well that are on the, the 2023 holiday playlist that I created on the channel. So make sure to also subscribe if you already have it. So thank you again for tuning in and we'll see you next time. Take care. Bye.